This is the story of Daniel Hussein. He lived with his mother at Guy Barnet Grove in Eltham, but also visited his father, who lived in Old Kenton Lane, near Wembley. He attended the Thomas Tallis Secondary School in Kidbrook, South London. When he was 15, he was referred to the anti radicalization program, including Prevent. He claimed he had Asperger's syndrome and was obsessed with the ideas of becoming a multimillionaire and believed he would do it by winning the lottery. He decided to make a deal with the devil. He wrote out a contract which read Agreement for the Lucifer's Rofocal. Perform a minimum of six sacrifices every six months for as long as I'm free and physically capable. Sacrifice only women. Build a temple for you. Do everything that I have promised for me to win the mega million super jackpot to receive free foot rewards. In return for the future sacrifices I make to you, the rewards could consist of wealth and power. He signed the documents with his blood. He had been in contact with others online about demons and spells and some of those spells were believed to have been to do with making him more attractive to women. He followed the teachings of Intel, a group that has become a murderous movement. On the 3rd of June 2020, Daniel Hussein travelled to an Asda supermarket in Collindale, North London. There on CCTV, he was caught buying a block of knives before struggling to fit them into his backpack. In order to provide proof of his age, he had to temporarily remove his mask for the shop staff. He also collected a full face balaclava and shovels that had been purchased on Amazon. The next day, he set up an online betting account with LottoGold.com, which runs bets on the mega millionaire super jackpot mentioned in his pact. Two sisters, Bieber Henry, who was 46, and her younger sister, Nicole Smallman, were celebrating Nicole's birthday at Fryan County Park near Wembley. The sisters had spent the night with friends celebrating Miss Smallman's birthday by enjoying a picnic and watching the sunset at the park which provides an elevated view over London. The sisters arrived together around 7pm carrying plastic bags containing food and alcohol. They were joined by at least six friends and spent the night in high spirits dancing and listening to music. The last of the friends left the park at around midnight but the sisters stayed later continuing to party and dancing with their fairy lights. The pair set up a camera and took more than 100 pictures in various poses using their clicker. The older sister Bieber was a senior social worker at Buckinghamshire Council and lived in Brent, North London. Before qualifying in social work, Bieber had a job driving disabled children to the activities. She herself was a mother. Her father was Herman Henry, the ABA featherweight champion of 1982. Nicole had graduated from Westminster University and was a photographer. She was also a talented artist and passionate about her work in documentary making and theatre. The sisters continued to dance, enjoy each other's company and taking pictures. However, one of the last pictures shows both sisters looking to their left, having their attention drawn away from the camera. That was because they saw Daniel approaching. He then proceeded to attack Bieber, stabbing her eight times. As Nicole went to try to protect her sister, she was stabbed 28 times. He dragged both bodies into an undergrowth and cleared away the picnic blankets and cushions in an attempt to cover up what he had done. But he had been badly cut in the attack and dripped blood on the bodies of both women and their belongings. Concerns was raised by friends and family when both sisters did not answer their phones in the morning after the party. They were angry when police did not begin looking for the women and launched their own search of the park. Within minutes, they found the women's sunglasses and the murder weapon in the grass. Adam Stone, Miss Smallman's partner, then fell to his knees screaming when he discovered the two entwined bodies of the women in the undergrowth. CCTV footage showed Hussein leaving the park and arriving back at his father's home nearby. Hussein's bloodstains were found on the picnic blankets and cushions on the leaves close to the bodies. Two latex gloves he had worn to try and avoid leaving fingerprints were also found in the park, saturated with his blood. He also left his blood on a bottle of co-op tonic water and open bottles of Prosecco. 
The knife found in the grass by Mr. Stone's father bore traces of his blood and that of Nicole Smallman. Hussein may have dropped it accidentally and spent hours looking for it before he was caught on CCTV, leaving the park and arriving at his father's home. He had tossed the women's phones into a pond in the park before he left. Daniel then continued to buy lottery tickets up until two days before he was finally arrested on the 1st of July, purchasing the Lotto Draw, Thunderball and Euro Million tickets. When he was arrested, Hussein made no comment and refused to give blood sample, thinking that was the only way he could be matched to his blood stains at the scene. He was horrified when he was told by the police that DNA samples taken from his cheek was enough to prove he was the killer. Police found he carried a homemade duct tape wallet with several contracts. One was a blood offering to make a girl at his school fall in love with him. He was charged and later convicted of murder. He awaits his sentence. Nicole was my last baby, um, so my second marriage. The one and only daughter my husband Chris has or had. Um, she was so gentle, so lovely. We always said she should have been born in the 60s. She was like a, a real hippie. She couldn't care about how she looked. And when she went to uni, she went to Westminster, which is next to Northwick Park Hospital in Harrow. And my eldest daughter had a flat in Wembley. So she did her first year in um, halls. And then her second year, she did with, um, she lived with Bieber. Bieber was, um, I suppose, more like me, probably about five foot. And um, she had a like small woman syndrome. I think because she was small, she always had to, she always pushed herself forward. Very forthright. Um, she really found her niche when she became a social.